Hello everyone, hope you're doing well and of course Arnie does too. Now because of the changes we've made to this planet and all its diverse ecosystems, we are currently witnessing an astonishing rate of extinction. This means that there are plenty of animals on this end of the conservation status, and many of them are in peril. But when species are listed in the threatened bracket, it can be hard to visualise how many of them are left. In this video I will be focusing on species that are critically endangered, as I'll be going through 5 species that have populations less than a thousand. And for our first species we'll be heading to the Indonesian island of Java, as we have the Java than rhinoceros. Now this rhino is one of the five extant species of rhino, and belongs to the same genus as the Indian rhinoceros. This rhino is very similar in appearance to the Indian rhinoceros, but has a much smaller head, with less apparent skin folds. This rhino is the second largest animal in Indonesia, just after the Asian elephant. They can be up to four meters long, and can reach a height of almost two meters. Despite being quite large, they tend to inhabit dense lowland rainforests, and large floodplains. In these areas, the Javan rhino is herbivorous, feeding on a variety of plant species. Species. Although they are barely hanging on today, this animal was once one of the most widespread rhinos in the world. It once lived throughout Northeast India and Southeast Asia. Today they are only found in one national park in Java, and there are only thought to be around 60 individuals left. But if they were once so widespread, how are their numbers so low today? Well just like many other rhinos around the world, the Javan rhino was and still is poached for its horns. These horns are made up of keratin, which is the same material that makes up hair and nails. Despite having no medicinal value, they are commonly used in traditional Chinese medicine, and as rhino horns can sell for $30,000 per kilogram, poaching is still a very big problem today. Loss of habitat due to agriculture was also a big problem, but as they're only found in one national park today, this is no longer a significant factor. Although these rhinos are heavily monitored and protected, the future still doesn't look great for these rhinos. As their population is restricted to one small area, they are very susceptible to disease and inbreeding depression, as it's estimated 100 rhinos would be needed to preserve the genetic diversity of this conservation reliant species. The health of the national park in which they're found in has also been called into question. An invasive palm species is taking over many parts of the park, and when this palm grows it blocks out a lot of light, which is needed by the plants that the Javan rhino feeds on. If we were to lose this iconic animal, it would not be the first iconic Javan animal that we've lost. The Javan tiger was declared extinct in 2003, as it was a victim to many of the threats that the Javan rhino is currently going through. I have left a donation link down below, so hopefully with your help, we'll get to see this rhino bounce back in the future. But for our next species, we'll be heading to India and Nepal, as we have the gharial. Now the gharial is one of the strangest looking crocodilians in the world, with a very long and slender snout. The gharial is the only living crocodilian that is visibly sexually dimorphic. Females do not have the garas, which are the bulbous appendages on the end of the male's snouts. Females are also much smaller than the males, and these males are some of the largest crocodilians in the world. They are obviously upstaged by the saltwater crocodile, and the gharial is also a lot less dangerous. Its long slender snout isn't great for taking down large mammals, and instead this crocodilian focuses on fish. These long slender snouts can easily slash through the water with minimal resistance, which is perfect for getting at fish. Although humans are off the menu, there are rare reports of attacks, but these are normally provoked attacks, and normally occur when the gharial are caught in fishing nets, or when defending their nests. Despite not hunting people, human remains have been found inside of gharials. This is because they regularly feed on corpses, are usually sent down the Ganges River as a part of a Hindu funerary custom. These crocodilians were once found in Pakistan. Pakistan, Bangladesh, Myanmar and Bhutan, but are now only restricted to small parts of India and Nepal. They are thought to be around 5,000 to 10,000 individuals in 1946, but in 2006 they were thought to be fewer than 250. Many gharials were killed by fishermen, as they were hunted for their skins and for traditional medicine, and their eggs were also collected for consumption. Their long slender snouts are also easily caught in fishing nets, and as they hunt fish, they are often lured over to these nets. Other human related factors have also led to their decline, as damming has had a huge impact on their numbers, as this damming changes the flow of many rivers, causing certain areas to dry out. As these gharials move very poorly out of water, it's very hard for them to find a new habitat to thrive. There have been many conservation efforts in recent years, with many captive gharials being released into the wild, but so far it's unclear how successful these programs have been. There are thought to be around 650 wild adult gharials left on this earth, but again I've left another donation link in the description below, and hopefully with your help they'll be able to bounce back in the future. But for our next species we'll be heading to Vietnam and Laos, as we have the Saola. 
Now this species is also known as the Asian unicorn, as it evaded discovery for a very long time. There are often stories of this creature, but they were very rarely seen. It was first described in 1993, after years of searching. They tend to inhabit wet evergreen forests in East and Southeast Asia, and their range appears to cover only 5,000 square kilometers. But in their forested homes, they also have to look out for predators. Humans, tigers, and crocodiles are all known to predate on this species, which is part of the reason behind their decline. This species has suffered from habitat loss and habitat fragmentation, but its main problem today is poaching. Many are lost to the illegal fur trade, and its meat is sometimes illegally sold in restaurants. They sometimes get caught in snares intended for other animals, such as wild boar and muntjac. Although these snares sound like a small problem, more than 26,000 snares have been removed from their habitat by conservation groups. Today, they are only thought to be around 750 individuals, but as they live in such remote areas, it is very hard to estimate their true population. Once again, I've left another donation link in the description below, and hopefully they'll be able to bounce back in the future. Before our next species, we'll be heading over to Japan, as we have the Iliomote cat. Now, as you can probably guess from its name, this cat is only found on the island of Iliomote. This island only has an area of around 290 square kilometers and also has a very small population. This small cat is a subspecies of the leopard cat, which can be found across South and East Asia. This cat is normally found in subtropical evergreen forests, but it's also found in areas of mangrove forests. The island in which this cat is found on is the smallest habitat of any wild cat species. These cats are around the same size as the domesticated cat, and at first glance they can look just like them. These cats are most active at dusk and dawn and are known to be agile climbers. They are known to feed on many of the island's birds but are also known to be good swimmers and will catch fish near the shore. Today it is thought that there are only around 100 to 109 individuals remaining and part of the reason behind this is their small distribution. As they're only found on one island, there's only so many cats that can live here but this isn't the only reason why their numbers are so small because they do face many other threats. A lot of their habitat is lost due to development and they also suffer predation from dogs and many are lost to traffic incidents. Traps set for wild boar and crabs are also known to contribute to their decline and today their survival hangs in the balance. Feral cats are also known to compete and also transmit diseases with this species, meaning that they are in much peril today. But once again, I have left another donation link down in the description below, and hopefully there will be more of these tiny cats in the future. But finally, we'll move over to the island of Espanola, as we have the Hood Island giant tortoise. Now as this video has been quite depressing so far, I thought I'd end on a more uplifting note, because although this tortoise is critically endangered, it does have a population of over 2,000. This wasn't always the case, as this tortoise was once on the brink of extinction. Espanola Island has a very unique ecosystem. It's home to many different species of large lizards, but as it's an island ecosystem, it's also very vulnerable. This tortoise's population was heavily exploited by whalers in the 19th century, and only 13 adults were found in the early 1970s. A breeding colony was set up at the Charles Darwin Research Centre, with initially two males and 11 females. Luckily, a third male called Diego was discovered at San Diego Zoo, and joined the others in the captive breeding program. Now, Diego was known for being quite a character and was very interested in the ladies. He is very well known for almost single-handedly saving his species, as it's thought that he's fathered more than 900 offspring. These offspring were then released back into the wild, and as of June 2020, after Diego retired, he was also released back into the wild, and hopefully more critically endangered animals can learn from Diego. But that's about it for this video. If you have any suggestions for other videos, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye. 